This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Shea. We turn now to look at how regulatory agencies under the Trump administration have been captured by corporations. On Wednesday, the Senate's Aviation Subcommittee held a hearing on the two deadly crashes of Boeing's new 737 MAX jets, where the Federal Aviation Administration defended the agency's reliance on aircraft makers to help certify their own planes for flight. The delegation process is known as the ODA program. This is FAA acting head Daniel Elwell. We have very strict oversight on every participant in an ODA program, and we make sure that they are experts in the field, that they have uh, the appropriate understanding of FAA regs and manuals, they have uh, professional integrity is checked, everything. But to your point, if we had no ODA at all, uh, it would, an estimation, it would require roughly 10,000 more employees um, uh, and, and to, to, to do that role at the FAA and about $1.8 billion um, for our certification office in the FAA. Boeing has spent more than $70 million on lobbying since 2015. It also contributed to the campaigns of members of the committees that regulate it, including more than $60,000 to the 2013 18 re-election campaign of Republican Senator Ted Cruz, who is chairman of the Aviation Subcommittee. This comes as the Senate Committee on Energy and Natural Resources is holding confirmation hearings today on Trump's nominee to head the Interior Department, David Bernhardt, a former oil lobbyist. Meanwhile, a federal jury in California has just ordered Monsanto to pay over $80 million to a cancer survivor whose illness was found to have been partly caused by the herbicide Roundup. For more on these corporate issues, we're joined by Rob Weissman, president of Public Citizen. On Wednesday, the group delivered a poster-sized version version of Bernhardt's conflict of interest cheat sheet to lawmakers will vote on his confirmation and receive nearly $1 million in donations from Bernhardt and his former lobbying firm. But we're going to get to that in a minute. We want to start with Boeing. Talk about the significance of this hearing, uh, the deaths of 346 people in two um, airline crashes in the last months, from Indonesia to Ethiopia, Boeing's plane found seriously at fault, yet the U.S. was the last to ground the MAX 7 and 8 planes. What did you learn yesterday? Well, we're seeing more and more evidence of how the FAA, the agency that's supposed to regulate Boeing, is in fact working for Boeing. It's staffed, actually, by Boeing, and it's outsourced its regulatory duties to Boeing. Um, in the clip you played at the top of the show, you have the acting administrator saying, I don't understand. He calls them safety companies, the airlines. He calls them safe, or the, air, the airplane manufacturers safety companies. I don't understand how they might cut back on safety. It's a pretty big problem when the guy who's in charge of regulating safety can't understand how the manufacturer might cut back on safety. Uh, and, of course, he comes from the industry. The person who runs the safety division at the FAA did a stint for the lobby association for the aerospace companies. The new guy coming in to replace the acting administrator comes from the airlines. Delta. So you, for Delta. So you have this total revolving door problem and a total capture of the agency maybe as bad as anywhere in government. So talk about who Stephen Dixon is, Steve Dixon, the former Delta executive who, who Trump has picked to head the FAA. Yeah, well, it's exactly part of the same story. So you have different parts of the industry running the FAA. So the results are predictable. They're not going to do their job. And in fact, it's not even clear they understand their job to really do safety and regulate the companies that they're overseeing, they seem to think that their job is to work in collaboration with the companies to, to do the best they can and actually to promote the industry. So was Boeing responsible for the deaths of 346 people? How and what exactly didn't the U.S. regulatory agencies do to prevent this from happening? What was their role? Right. We're still going to have to learn more. But what seems to be unfolding is that they redesigned the 737. The design required some new kind of software, the autopilot software. The autopilot software made errors. The pilots, the human pilots, weren't able to overcome, in many cases, the errors inflicted by the, the computer software, and the planes crashed. Um, Blumenthal said, Senator Blumenthal said yesterday at the hearing, he's read reports from many pilots in the United States who had had exactly the same problem, but were able to overcome, unlike the the pilots in Ethiopia and in Indonesia. Um, so we were pretty lucky, maybe, that it's only been two parts. How long had this uh, been in use, the 737 MAX? Uh, this is relatively new. They've rushed it to the market. 
Um, so there's still new uh, technology, and it's exactly the case of why you want an independent regulator. They rushed it. They had c competition from Airbus. They were under pressure to get it to market quickly, and so they did, and it appears they did so. I'm cutting corners on safety. You are the president and CEO of Public Citizen, which was founded by Ralph Nader. Ralph's grandniece, yeah. uh, Samia Stumo, died in the Ethiopia crash. Um, she was one of 346 people in those two crashes. Um, right now, what do you feel has to happen with the FAA? And Dixon is not a done deal, right? He has to be approved by the Senate. That's right. He'll have to be confirmed. Um, you know, I want to say I, I, I knew Samia, uh, Ralph's grandniece, and she's delightful. When we see these regulatory issues, they're often abstract and people maybe don't pay attention to them. What they fail to realize is that actually failed regulation means people are going to die. And when you know the person who died, it changes the whole story for you. It personalizes it and makes it real. Uh, and so it's totally heartbreaking. At the FAA, um, they have outsourced so much of their regulatory oversight to Boeing, there's a real problem about how they can actually do their public duty again. You heard Elwood say, gosh, we would need 10,000 new inspectors. I don't know if they would need 10,000 new inspectors, but they will need more. They don't have the capacity in the agency, so it's going to take some time to rebuild this agency. Let's move on to Bernhardt. Let's move on to the hearing that's taking place today, the Interior Secretary, and why you've written this open letter. Well. Out of all the Trump appointees, this guy may be the most conflicted one coming in. It's hard to say, but he's right in the running for the most conflicted cabinet appointee. Um, he carries around a card listing all of his conflicts of interest and all the companies he's not supposed to work for, because um, he can't keep track of them. It's more than two dozen. On the other hand, it's not really clear why he carries the card around, because he doesn't seem to use it. He is, in fact, working on behalf of the companies that he used to represent, um, intervening in a lot of decisions of the Department of Interior so far as the number two um, to help companies that he used to work for. And why, did, why do you think Trump chose him uh, uh, to replace Zinke? Well, you know, the, the, the MO at the Trump administration seems to be, if you've got an ethics crisis because someone's forced out, why don't we replace them with an insider corporate lobbyist? That's our solution to the ethics problem. Uh, this guy was there number two. He does know the agency. He's very effective. He's very effective working for the companies that he used to represent. Uh, and so he was a natural choice for the Trump administration. And the Department of Interior is actually looking at a proposal expanding offshore oil drilling, which has happened while he's been there? Right. So he is involved in efforts on offshore oil drilling. He used to work for the oil and gas industry. He's involved in changes to the Endangered Species Act on behalf of clients he used to work for. He's now intervened in pesticide decisions that would affect uh, the former Dow company, uh, who made a million-dollar contribution to the Trump administration, is close with the with the administration. Is it true Bernhardt ordered some furloughed workers back to work during the government shutdown to push through oil and natural gas drilling permits, offshore drilling um, permits in the Alaska Refuge? Uh, I don't know if Bernhardt was the one who ordered it, but that's definitely occurred, yes. So what are you demanding right now? Well, our position is this is not a guy who's qualified to run the Department of Interior, and he shouldn't be approved. What about pesticides? Well, he's intervened in, uh, recently. The New York Times just reported in two instances of pesticides, highly toxic pesticides. Big study inside the Department of Interior found that these pest the use of these pesticides would jeopardize more than a thousand endangered species. So the conclusion is okay. We got to we got to deal with this problem. He's not a guy who knows pesticides, but he intervened. He came. He sort of swooped into this process and said, okay, never mind. We're not doing that. We're not going to take any regulatory action. Business as usual. So his move benefited major pesticide makers, including FMC Corporation and Dow AgroScience, Dow a major donor to President Trump. I think they gave like a million dollars to his inaugural committee. That's exactly right. Finally, the latest court decision that just came down around Monsanto and Roundup, its pesticide. So a, a huge decision in a case brought by uh, a man who has uh, cancer, still living with cancer. Are alleging that it was caused by Roundup. Um, and the jury came in and said, yes, it caused it, and gave huge damage, not just for the disease that he's been inflicted with, but as, as a punitive damage to punish Monsanto, now owned by Bayer, for what the jury believed was covering up of the evidence of the carcinogenicity of Roundup for many, many years. Will this award happen? Well, you don't know. I mean, Bear is going to certainly uh, Bear Monsanto will certainly appeal this decision. But in this case, it was called it was designated by the judge as a bellwether case because there's so many cases in line, and the judge is saying, look, 
We want to see how the first few trials go, and then we're going to make a decision about how we should look at the rest of these cases. It's going to really uh, strengthen the hand of the, of the other people who have claims to negotiate a fair settlement from Bear Monsanto. Rob Weissman, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Robert Weissman is president of Public Citizen. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, biased, uncovering the hidden prejudice that shapes what we see, think and do. Stay with us.